Hey everyone, Madrybrad here. Pokemon Black with only one Munchlax was a fun solo run. Let's follow that up with one of my all-time weirdest ones. Today's the day that we figure out, would I be able to beat Pokemon Red with a team created by a random number generator? Alright, this is possibly going to be our dumbest challenge yet. I've had a lot of people ask me to do this over the years. I've got a random number generator in front of me from Google that's picking numbers between 1 and 151. We're gonna have it pick six numbers and get all of those Pokemon before the end of the game. I guess if we land on any numbers for Pokemon that would be impossible, we'll just re-roll those numbers. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I mean, it's gotta be a win, right? Yeah, some of the Pokemon might be awful, but I'm used to winning with one awful Pokemon. Even if all six of them suck, I can probably still make this work. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use the Pokemon that our number generator tells us to. Pre-evolutions are fine, of course, since we're just leveling them up so that we can evolve them into the Pokemon that's the goal. I might need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. You know, like if they're just for HMs. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. All right, well, Let's get our numbers. We rolled 94, 40, 78, 73, 55, and 46. Okay, so I looked it up. That translates to Gengar, Wigglytuff, Rapidash, Tentacruel, Golduck, and Paris. Uh, is this even going to be a challenge? Gengar is about as good as it gets in Gen 1, and Tentacruel is a beast. Hey, I guess this means we're going to be turning on trade evolutions by level up in the randomizer for the first time. Normally I don't do it because it makes the run easier for literally no reason, uh, but we finally have a reason to use it, so we're going to use it. So maybe people will stop commenting it to me like as if I don't know it uh, day after day, year after year. So, we're in Viridian Forest, training up my Ghastly a little bit before the Rock Gym. Yeah, I had to use the Pokemon Randomizer to start with one of the Pokemon that we need, of course. So, I decided to start with Ghastly. I figured it would give us the most interesting early game, since we don't have to overlevel for the Rock Gym. We've got Nightshade, and they can only hit us with Bide, so I'm not worried. I'm really pumped for this challenge, though. Now that I've got an awesome team waiting for us, I'm just really excited to go catch them. Oh, we beat the Rock Gym at such a low level that we leveled up twice over the course of the fight, by the way. That's incredible. Don't know if I've ever had that happen on a two Pokemon fight. <laughs> okay, with that done, I go straight to the grass on Route 3 to catch a Jigglypuff. Now, believe it or not, but this little route in between Pewter City and Mount Moon is the only place in Red and Blue where you can catch a Jigglypuff. Isn't that weird? Feels like they should be in the cave, too. Anyway, next is Mount Moon, so naturally I can get my fill of Moonstones here. I guess we could turn Jigglypuff into Wigglytuff right away, but she's gonna stop learning moves by level up once I do that. I figure that I should let Jigglypuff level normally until she hits level 34, since she'll have Rest and Body Slam by then. After that, we evolve her for the crazy health. That won't be for a long time, though, since this one is at level 5 and only knows Sing. Oh, and I also picked up Paris while I was in Mount Moon, of course. Now, this little guy is super frail, and we're not allowed to even evolve him, but I might be able to get away with using Spore a little bit. It's a terrifying 100 accuracy sleep move, but Paris is so super slow that it almost never goes first. I might use it a little bit, but who knows, it's probably not necessary. Anyway, next is the Water Gym, but on our way there, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. Hey, Water Gym was real easy. I tried tagging in Jigglypuff to get some experience and hit Sing, but it got crit to go down right away, so we just finished it all with Ghastly. I get the feeling Ghastly is going to be the one competent member of the team for a long time, considering we can't evolve Paris, and Jigglypuff is just really weak right now. Next is the rival. Right away, Pidgeotto ruined Ghastly's accuracy, but Gust was normal in this game, so it couldn't hurt us. We were in no danger. Speaking of no danger, Abra can't fight back, so I had Paris scratch it until it fainted for the experience. Man, that's like no damage. Is it even worth putting experience on Paris? 
For Retita, I kept Paris out, who obviously fainted fast, and I had to finish it off with Ghastly pretty easily. Last was Charmander, who went down in two hits of Nightshade. Alright, so next up is Nugget Bridge. Hey, while I'm traveling, let's talk about Experience All. I've been talking about this a lot in the comments with people lately. I got asked about this a lot. So in a recent challenge, I said that there's no experience share in Gen 1. That was the Nightshade run, so I was talking about how I wish there was an experience share to give Polyrath. Anyway, there is an item that shares experience, but it's not experience share. It's called experience all, and it's awful. It's awful for so, so many reasons. But let me just share a couple since people ask about it so much. First of all, to get experience all, you have to catch 50 different Pokemon. Then you need to go talk to a guy in Fuchsia City, so you already need to get decently far into the game and have spent a lot of time catching 50 Pokemon. That already isn't worth doing and would make it too slow to be worth it in one of these challenge runs, but it gets worse. Experience All splits the experience evenly across the whole team. That means your experience is being split six ways in a team run like this. Every single fight. You can't turn it off without going to a Poke Center and depositing the item from your inventory into the PC. Do you have an HM Pokemon? Well then it's even worse because you're losing some of that experience to them. And to top it all off, after every single time you make a Pokemon faint, you will get six different text boxes to tell you how much experience you got. Every wild Pokemon you grind against, every single time you're fighting a trainer, Every Pokemon you make faint, you get six separate text boxes to tell you the experience you got. It's brutally slow, far slower than just leveling the Pokemon manually one by one or even switch training them. That's why I don't use Experience All, because every step of the way Experience All is just much slower than playing the run normally. Now let's go fight the rival again on the SSN, we gotta make some progress. So this fight was really easy. I mostly just used it to switch train Jigglypuff some more. Kadabra hurt us a little bit, and so did Charmeleon, but unless they crit us multiple times, there's just no way they could have made us faint. Next is the Electric Gym. I started by having Jigglypuff sing, but after I used Pound and it did almost nothing, I had the good sense to switch out to our newly evolved Haunter to easily finish it off. I took out Pikachu the same way, singing with Jigglypuff then fighting it with Haunter, mostly just to level up Jigglypuff. Last was Raichu, and I was worried when I did less than half of his health and damage, but then he used an X speed. Yeah, if he just used Thunderbolt twice, then he probably could have won with a crit, and in Gen 1, Raichu crits a lot. But he used an X speed, and then Thunderbolt, and then Thunder Shock. Well, that was another win for us. We're back on the road again. Feels kind of weird doing a team run, and not having this be around when I catch something new, but we can't actually get the next Pokemon that we need until we have the Poke Flute, so we're gonna have to do Giovanni and the Rival Fight. May as well go do the Grass Gym while we're in town though, right? Right away, I'm opening most fights with Jigglypuff then switching to Haunter so that I can split the experience between the two. Jigglypuff is getting to the point where I can fight some stuff, but only having Pound is really holding it back. Haunter is leveling slower since I'm splitting the experience, but it's such a strong Pokemon in this generation that I'm not really too worried. I'm starting to feel like Paris might not be worth leveling up since it's so slow and frail and we'd only be doing it for one good move, but who knows. Maybe I'll think of a better use. For now though, I'm grabbing the TM for Psychic so that Haunter can have a better move for the Grass and Poison gyms, then I'll be taking out Giovanni. Oh, and this video is sponsored by Patreon. And by sponsored by Patreon, I mean, uh, there's no rewards on my Patreon. It's just a place where you can optionally choose to pelt me with coins once a month. I appreciate it, though. I'm sorry, this is YouTube. I super appreciate the super thanks. You can't call them tips or donations. They're not legally tips or donations. People just call them that. I forget what they legally count as. I asked my accountant once. I don't remember the answer. So, Giovanni was real easy. I used him to switch train Jigglypuff a little more since he couldn't really do anything against us. I'm sure none of that surprises you, Giovanni is always the dud fight here. The grass gym right after was a little harder, with us getting put to sleep and crit with a bunch of razor leaves. 
Haunter is a beast in Gen 1 though, and just tanked all the hits. I couldn't get away with switch training the whole fight, but Haunter was able to win it pretty easily with Psychic. Last for the boss rush is the Pokemon Tower rival fight. First is Pidgeotto, so I fought the exact same way as last time, where I put it to sleep with Jigglypuff, then have Haunter finish it off easily. Execute is next, so I went to go do the same thing but lost some health during the process. Naturally, once Haunter came in, it was easy since I didn't think Execute could really do much even if it was awake. Third was Water Onyx, so I just brute forced it with Psychic on Haunter and ended up losing half of our health to Dragon Rage in the process. Then out came Cadaver, so I switched to Jigglypuff, knowing that I really did need to put this guy to sleep. Problem is, he disabled Sing on the first turn, so all I got to do was hit Pound, but it did way more damage than I was expecting, and I too shot him with Jigglypuff. Last was Charmeleon, so I tried singing but ended up missing until I fainted. Back out to Haunter, and although we did two-shot it, we dropped to pretty low health along the way. This fight doesn't usually give us this much trouble. Hey, now that we're done the Pokemon Tower, we can get a new Pokemon. I went ahead and got the Super Rod, since it's the only thing that can fish up a Psyduck in this game. I head over to the Cerulean City gym to go fishing, because it's hilarious that you can catch a Psyduck there. And we caught a Psyduck. Now, it's not really good at all right now, and it doesn't learn a water move by level up until it's been a gold duck for a long time. But I figured I can go to the Safari Zone, get the HM for Surf, slap that on it, and it'll do fine. Now, let's just hope that the Poison Gym goes well. Well, would you look at that? While fighting trainers in the Poison Gym, Haunter evolved into Gengar. Looks like if you use the Randomizer to make it so trade Pokémon evolve by level up, Haunter becomes Gengar at level 37. I kind of figured the evolution would be in the 50s. I feel real good about this gym now. Oh yeah, that was super easy. Hardly even got hurt. Alright, now we've got some new Pokémon to pick up. Let's go get the rest of our team. Now that we can surf, I go straight to the ocean and pick up Tentacool. I made sure to hunt around a little bit to get a decent leveled one. Yeah, it will mean that I'm getting less stat experience on him over the course of the game, I guess, but he's a beast and it shouldn't matter in the end. I mean, it's level 35, that's only three levels lower than our Gengar that we've been training since the start of the game. Oh man, we're gonna just demolish the fire gym, aren't we? On our way there though, we have to hit up the Pokemon Mansion. That means we get another new Pokemon, Ponyta. It's a cool Pokemon, but its Gen 1 moves just aren't very good. Fire Spin and Ember are its only fire moves, so I think I'm gonna teach it Fire Blast when I get the TM from Blaine. Speaking of! Okay, we've had a lot of funny fire gym fights, but this one has to be the funniest one to me. We caught a wild tentacle from right outside the gym, leveled it up one time so it would evolve, taught it surf, and I beat Blaine's entire team without taking damage. Blaine, the local wild Pokemon, can beat you with an HM that you can't not have by the time you get here. I don't think you should be a gym leader. <laughs> Well, with that done, we're at Sylphco. Now, that means that we've got two rival fights, two Giovanni fights, and a Psychic Gym, then the Elite Four. Now, the Giovanni fights should be a walk in the park because of our awesome water moves, but the Psychic Gym and the rival has me worried. Now, normally the Psychic Gym isn't too bad because they're really frail, but our hardest hitters are both part poison type. I think that our best bet in that gym is to level up Jigglypuff more and use it to win most of the fight. As for our rival though, I'm really not that confident. Our highest level Pokemon is only level 40, so that's a lot lower than normal for this part in the run. We obviously have a lot more Pokemon than usual, but we also don't really have that great of type coverage. Plus, Paris and Psyduck are both low enough levels that they probably won't do anything of note in the fight. I think I'm going to use Sylphco as a way to level up Jigglypuff and Psyduck, and then we'll try the rival fight. I would like to evolve Psyduck into Golduck soon. Okay, first try. Right away, it's Pidgeot, and it shouldn't have been a problem at all, except for its one hit on us with a critical wing attack, so we lost a chunk of health. At least wing attack is super weak in this game. For Execute, I sent in Ponyta to one-shot it with Fire Blast, and next was Water Onyx, who we rocked with Psychic, it crit us with a Hydro Pump to almost take us down, and then we finished him off. Alakazam is next, and I didn't have a great answer for it, so I sent in Ponyta to use Stomp. 
it ended up doing awesome damage, and thanks to Alakazam wasting time with Disable, we actually took it out. Last is Charizard, so I sent in Tentacruel to use Surf for a one-shot. That went really, really well. Oh, and Giovanni right after that was so easy that I beat a few of his Pokemon with our underleveled Psyduck. That was amazing. And hey, Ponyta Stomps are actually doing pretty well. Maybe that'll be enough physical damage to carry us through the Psychic Gym. Yeah, so the Psychic Gym ended up being pretty easy. Stomp did an alright job on the physically weak ones, but like usual, the Alakazam at the end is the real threat. He took out Ponyta just fine, and he probably could have taken out Gengar, but he used Psy Wave, and that move is a total dud, so it went fine. So I actually got really worried in the ground gym early on when Dugtrio outsped and one-shot Psyduck and almost did the same thing to Tentacruel, but it hung on with 8 health and we pretty easily were able to take out the rest of his team as a result. Is that the closest we've ever come to losing the ground gym fight with water types? Mmm, probably. Time for the rival. First is Pidgeot, so I have Tentacruel take it out with Surf. Tentacruel's part poison, so Pidgeot just spams agility and never hitting us. Next is Rhyhorn, who's obviously a one-shot, even from Psyduck's Surf. And third is Execute, who is a one-shot with a critical fire blast. For Water Onyx, I sent in Jigglypuff to sing, but we just got one-shot with a non-critical bite from full health, so that wasn't happening. Out to Gengar, and I just confuse it right away, then used Psychic. Problem is, Water Onyx keeps hitting Dragon Rage, so we took a ton of damage. We took him out, but only had 43 health left. Second from last is Alakazam, and this thing is a critting machine. So I sent in Ponyta to try and soften him up with stomps. It started great with Alakazam trying to heal with full health, but then he hit a Psybeam beam that took us from full health to red. He finished his off, but his health was so low that by the time he did, Gengar was able to come in and finish it off with Nightshade. Last was Charizard, but we still have Tentacruel, so despite him being a good 14 or so levels higher than us, we took him out easy. Awesome fight. Last bit of traveling, and we still have a bit of prep work to do. See, we can't actually finish this run until we have all the Pokemon that our number generator told us to get, so we still need to evolve Ponyta and Jigglypuff. Golduck evolved from that rival fight. Now, Jigglypuff, we could evolve whenever, but I want to level it up a little bit more so it gets more good moves first. As for Ponyta, we just need to level up a little bit more for it. It shouldn't take that long, but if I want to make them combat viable for the Elite Four, then they need a little bit more work on top of that. They just aren't strong enough right now. Oh, and I know that Jigglypuff can learn some wild moves. I should teach it Thunderbolt just so that I can finally have an answer for Water Onyx. Oh, and I should get Ice Beam too for Lance. Put that on Tentacruel. Wait, can Gengar learn Thunderbolt? I feel like I used that in Pokemon Stadium. Ooh, yeah, I should for sure give it to him. That'll be a lot stronger than giving it to Jigglypuff. Oh, and for anyone who doesn't know, by the way, I did a Let's Play with my friends of Pokemon Stadium a few years back. It's on this channel. I've done uh, literally over 100 Let's Plays and over 6,000, I think, Let's Play videos on my channel. And I'm very, very proud of a lot of them. I think a lot of them are really good. But a lot of people tell me that that Pokemon Stadium one was like one of the best. And I think views wise, it might be my most watched Let's Play, which is crazy to me. Uh, to which, of course, everyone always then asks, are you going to do Pokemon Stadium 2? And much like in the Pokemon Stadium 1 Let's Play where I said we will be doing Pokemon Stadium 2 eventually, the answer is still yes, we will Let's Play Pokemon Stadium 2 eventually. There is no timeline, there will not be a timeline, it will occur when it occurs, trust me. Anyway, now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. Kind of crazy seeing how low a lot of our Pokémon's levels are for this point in the run. Like, our highest leveled Pokémon is still quite a few levels below the lowest leveled Pokémon in the Elite Four. Our stats really aren't anything special, but we've got some decent moves, and in Gen 1 that's often enough to carry you to a win. Not everyone on this team is going to be useful, especially not our level 9 Paris, but I think that we're going to need to use the whole rest of our team at some point to beat the Elite Four. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. This was all super easy with Thunderbolt on Gengar. Jinx gave us a little bit of trouble and almost made Rapidash faint, but as soon as that was over, it was back to being easy. Great start. Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno, obviously this one went super easily, Water Moves for the Onyx, and Psychic for Gengar with the Fighting Types. 
Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. This one took quite a few tries, actually, mostly because of Hypnosis and Dream Eater. So right away we crit her Gengar with Psychic to take her to low health, she illegally uses a potion as the second move in the round, and then we finish her off with Psychic. So, great start. Then she does a bunch of Agatha moves, where she keeps switching back and forth between a Haunter and a Golbat for over an entire minute until I was able to take down both of them, mostly because they wouldn't stop wasting their turns switching. I lost on some attempts where they didn't just switch all the time. Arbok was pretty tough and did great damage to Wigglytuff, but we still hurt it quite a bit, and our Gengar could easily finish it near the end. Last is the second Gengar, who we managed to confuse right away. Now if he hits Hypnosis and Dream Eater, then we just lose this fight. But thanks to trainers not having stat experience in this game, our Gengar was faster, and we actually won. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. Yeah, you basically can't lose this fight if you have poison types. Gen 1 is Gen 1, and so Lance spams agility, thinking it's super effective against us. Yeah, Tentacruel fainted due to some huge hits from an Aerodactyl that was a way higher level than him, but we've got a full team so it wasn't a big deal. Time to go on to the final fight! Finally, the Pokémon Champion. Right away, he starts with Pidgeot, so I just Thunderbolted him twice with Gengar. He never hit us since he was just charging for Sky Attack. For Alakazam, I kept Gengar in and went for Confuse Ray right away. It worked great with him hitting himself on the first round, but the second round he hit Psybeam to take out 100 health. We ended up taking him out just because he used Reflect instead of Recover, and Reflect doesn't even carry over to other members of his team in Gen 1. For Rhydon, I just used Golduck to take it out with Surf, but not before losing nearly all of our health to Fury attacks of all things. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, Rhydon was double our level. After that is Executor, who tanked Fire Blast like it was nothing, but he just missed us twice, so we hit three Fire Blasts in a row to take him out. Back to Gengar to deal with Water Onyx with a single Thunderbolt, and last was Charizard, so I sent in Tentacruel. Right away, he crit a Slash to take us to only four health after our Surf took out about half of his. That's when he threw the fight by using Rage to finish us off locking him into only doing rage for the rest of the fight, and thus making it so he can't hit ghosts anymore. He legit could have beaten the rest of my team probably pretty easily if he used any move either than rage. That's amazing. That was both one of the easiest and one of the funnest team runs that I have ever done, and I have done well over a hundred challenges now. I kind of want to do it again or do it in more generations, I guess. Let me know if you want to see that. I really hope you guys like that run. Next week's challenge will be up next Saturday like usual, with Skyrim, well, always sneaking. It's my first Skyrim challenge in a few years now, so I'm pretty pumped for that. And then after that, we'll be right back to Pokemon challenges. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. All right, outro. As much as I would love to ramble about every dumb little thing that goes on in my life, um, I have such a crazy busy work week to do right now that I really need to get to all of my stuff, which is why there wasn't even a challenge last week when I thought there would be, because work really got away from me and it's been difficult. I'm doing fine though, don't worry about me, I'm getting everything right back on track, everything's fine. I just have a bunch of work to get done uh, today and tomorrow and the day after. So I'm going to go get that done. Thank you everybody so much for watching and until next time, have a nice day.